G'day, this is Chris Chicken Chapman from The Running Company Australia, and in this Running Company catch-up we'll be talking with Sean Williams from Sweat. Sean is a long-time barefoot runner who has seen it all when it comes to running and training barefoot. In this episode we'll be talking with Sean about his experiences, and hopefully we can all take something away from this. Sean has been a runner for over 40 years, he's nearly 50, and has been coaching professionally since 1997, where he's coached anyone wanting to learn how to run, from amateurs to Olympians in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, based out of Centennial Park. Sean is about to embark on his next move where he'll be bringing his experience to Melbourne. But enough from me, over to you, Sean. Thank you so much for joining us, I really appreciate it. Um, Thanks for me, Chicken, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> can you give us a, a bit of a, a history as to uh, yourself and your background uh, in regards to training? Uh, sure, yeah, and well look, I've been a runner for over 40 years now, I'm, I'm nearly 50. And I started little laps when I was eight and joined Ride Little Laps in Sydney and did all my competition back then, running, jumping and chucking pretty well bare feet. Half of the kids did back then. We got around the local neighbourhood and, and often we'd be, you know, we'd, mum or dad would give you the thongs or the sandals to wear and then you'd rip them off and you'd be running around bare feet all the time. So I came from quite a barefoot background as a child anyway. Uh, ended up getting the, the really lightweight lightweight um, tiger shoes, now Asics, which were almost dead black, you know, the blue and white ones, yeah. and did a fair bit of competing in them, all bare feet, in my teens, and, and then uh, graduated towards bikes as well, which were pretty well um, dead flat, minimal drop-off, zero drop-off. Um, uh, continued on, did it, dabbled in triathlon in my late teens, way back in the really early days of triathlon, yeah. uh, 85, 86, and I did about four or five triathlons, including the Today FM Champion of Sydney Triathlon, one down in Lake Illawarra, one up at Narrabeen, all around the Sydney area. Found, I was just starting uni and about to do teaching at uni, uh, spoke to a few of the top triathletes, worked out I wouldn't have time to actually become a top triathlete and tie it in with uni and having to work one or two part-time jobs all the time, so I, I kept that running. Um, and actually moved more towards the, the, the normal modern day runner at that point in time where I started wearing the, uh, the, the thicker shoes and the, 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 uh, the typical 1980s uh, you know, Air Pegasus, Nike Air Pegasus and that kind of shoe in training. Yep. Wore more solid uh, racing flaps with even a bit of a drop off on them. Did that for a while. Anyway, I was more of an 800, 1500 metre runner at that point. And uh, I went out to um, ES Marks in Sydney one afternoon for an interclub. Unfortunately, I'd left my size 14 bikes at home that day. Uh, looked around, tried to um, beg, borrow or steal a pair of 14s and the, the largest pair of shoes I could find were a 12 and I literally could not get them on my feet. Line up in a 1500 metre that day and bare feet. Uh, ripped my feet apart on the hot tartan but ran a massive PB and I thought, Gee, it's been a few years since I've actually run or trained bare feet, but look at the difference it made. I've done no major changes in training. And that from that point on, I, I, I converted pretty quickly into doing far more barefoot and minimal running. And that was way before the, the barefoot craze. You're talking uh, still you know, mid to late 80s at that point. That would have been about 1987. So you're talking about 30 years ago now. Strike. And then I've been a competitive runner ever since. I've run 29 for 10K, just over 14 for 5. Uh, really enjoyed it. I uh, had a lifetime of running. Now a master's runner. And, uh, and still doing quite a lot of running barefoot, but in shoes as well. Yeah, coaching-wise, I, I, I took up coaching um, pretty well when I started teaching. Did a lot of PE teaching and coached a wide variety of sports, including my favourite, track and field. Um, started incorporating my own little squad on top of teaching after school hours just in the local community, getting little aids and local um, uh, amateur athletic club people on board to a, in a local community squad and that, that happened um, in the late 90s, so nearly 20 years ago now and then that built and sweat developed around 99, 2000 and uh, became a bit bigger when I gave up full time teaching in, at the end of 04, so 12 years ago now and I've gradually built sweat into being a, a, um, a running uh, group for people of all ranges of, of abilities there from your absolute beginners and, and children right through to, to good elite runners. So I've loved doing that, but I've kept up my own running in the meantime. What are the benefits of training barefoot? 
Oh, look, I think there's two major benefits. Uh, number one, you tend to be able to, well, the majority of people do, and I know I certainly do, run with a more natural gait. Yep. Uh, the way you were designed. There's none of us that are, well, so maybe some runners out there have what you just about term a perfect technique. I certainly don't. And I know that I pronate way more wearing shoes, as in uh, with a drop off type shoe. And not only do I pronate, but I'll flick my uh, left foot out far more when I'm wearing shoes as well. If you look at uh, any footage of me running in shoes versus running bare feet, and there's a massive change in technique. I look, I'd give myself an eight or nine out of 10 technique wise, uh, bare feet versus maybe a five, even a four out of 10. I look shocking um, running in shoes. Yeah. Uh, that's my only job where I do slower pace running in shoes and I still uh, much prefer barefoot or at least wearing minimal shoes like a, a New Balance Minimus uh, when I want to run quickly if I want to run properly. And I call that real running. Mm. Uh, for me and for so many people I coach, the same thing has happened. The evidence is there that they're far more likely to mid-foot or four-foot strike um, or somewhere between mid and four-foot striking when they're barefoot or wearing minimal shoes compared to if they're wearing the higher heel shoes. Yep. There's no doubt that the higher heel shoes promote that heel strike. Um, the other major issue apart from the technique, the, mo- the other uh, major advantage of running bare feet, I feel, is that um, if you don't have that 300 or 400 or 500 grams on each foot, it might not seem like much weight, but um, when, you're, when you're running and you're taking thousands, even tens of thousands of steps, depending on how far you're running, it all adds up. Yep. And so I find the hip flexors, the hamstrings, and, and a whole bunch of other parts of the body there are doing far less work when you're running bare feet. You end up recovering way quicker. Um, as long as the surface you're running on is not too hard, there's the, the converse uh, uh, approach there where you, you're looking at the impact and the impact can actually go up through the feet and you can end up with sort of quads and, and hips and that sort of thing if you're running on a really hard surface like a tartan track or even worse a, a recatan track or if you're, you know, if you're crazy enough to run on the, on the bitumen or the concrete on the road or the sidewalk or whatever. But if you're talking about running on, um, on dirt, uh, an oval, that sort of thing and where you've got a bit of cushioning involved there, I'll guarantee you that 99% of runners will pull up better running bare feet as well. Uh, not only from the impacts, uh, but also from the fact that they're not literally doing weight training. But by, by wearing heavy shoes, you're, you're doing a form of weight training. Low, low resistance, but um, it, you know, if you're talking about mega reps, you're talking about a, a weight, it, like running is a series of jumps, a jump off the left foot and jump off the right foot. You're talking about multiple reps. You know, thousands, if not tens of thousands of reps on the left foot and the right foot. You add up all that weight on top of what your, your body is already carrying bare feet. All that weight that you're carrying bare, um, wearing shoes, when you add it all up, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist or a mathematician to work out you're your, your loading your body far more by wearing weighted shoes on your feet. But I, I don't believe that. Um, but, yeah, we can get away with doing all our running bare feet. I, I, I've tried it, and I've come a crocker. I've, I've either gotten stress fractures or, uh, or you know, ended up with pretty bad plantar fasciitis, which ended up completely tearing the plantar fascia when I was running bare feet on a beach up at Old Bar near Taree in yeah. uh, the mid north coast of New South Wales. And there were, look, it had nothing to do with running on pure sand. There were pebbles there, and I kept trying to hack it out, yeah. uh, running on uh, on the the pebbles which were around between golf ball and, and tennis ball size and it's more of an impact thing but uh, that's one of the issues with running bare feet you've got the environment there and it's all very well if you're running on a bowling green type oval or even smooth dirt or a you know, lovely smooth trail but once you start talking about rocks stones boots or even worse bitumen it might feel smooth enough on your feet but yeah bitumen uh, is not a, a, a god made thing it's a man-made surface there, bitumen, concrete, tar, uh, any, anything hard, um, I don't think you, you should be running bare feet on any of that. Yeah, no. get a bit of cushioning there. Yeah. What's the craziest thing barefoot you've ever done? Good, yeah, look, I, I uh, started becoming quite fanatical about barefoot running uh, around the time I was running at my best, and I'd, I'd run like 29, 31 to 10k in the track, foot in 09, 
um, tried to revert back to soos and, and comparing running in soos, running in spikes on the track, for example, to racing in bare feet. And there'd be half a minute difference. I'd be lucky to, to run, you know, 14.45 wearing spikes. And every time I, I took the spikes off, it, it, I, I'd, I'd run way quicker again. And the same thing over 10K, I couldn't break 30 wearing two. Wow. Uh, so I got to the point where virtually any speed work I did and any uh, track racing I did, I had to do it bare feet. I was like that fanatical about it, even when living in Canada. And uh, we were living in Vancouver, which is a warmer part of Canada, but compared to most other parts of the world, um, still very cold. And we are actually there where the locals told me that it was the coldest winter that Vancouver had experienced in 30 years. So they were getting bucket loads of snow. They were literally getting two metres of snow in the city and that kind of thing. Made it hard to, to get out and run bare feet. But you'd get your, your, your cold patches when there'd be a blizzard followed by maybe a week or a bit under a week where it'd, it'd warm up again and things would melt. And I'd always be able to find somewhere to run bare feet. And occasionally I'd be doing things like running bare feet on a treadmill. Anyway, during one of the warmer patches uh, during that winter, in uh, 90, 1996, leading into 1997, I went with uh, an English uh, expat uh, friend of mine named Kevin O'Connor, who's still running very well as an old guy now. Um, one of my main training partners and good friends in Vancouver at the time. And we went to a place called Burnaby Lake, and it's about a 10 metre loop. And anyway, Burnaby is about uh, probably 15k from downtown Vancouver. And we, we decided to do a uh, 10 miler um, where we, we just warm up in one direction for five or six k, then we turn around and we do a lap of the a lap of the lake as a Bartlek over about 10 k. Anyway, we've done the warm up, and uh, it, at the beginning of the warm up, it was a lovely, sunny, relatively sunny, warm afternoon probably 3.30 in the afternoon, so we had time before dark. And got out there, did the warm up, and then really black clouds came over head. But by that point, we're about to do the workout. We're all pumped up to do the fart lift. Uh, Kevin changed his shoes you know, from the training shoes into the spike. Uh, I ripped my training shoes off and I'm bare feet ready to go on the uh, lovely wood chip trail, lovely soft wood chip trail, ready to go bare feet. Didn't think that it was bucket down snow. And off we went. And within a minute or two of um, taking off, it started bucketing down snow, like really heavy snow. Probably haven't seen that heavy snow in my life. But, you know, the sky was black and it just came down at a million miles an hour. We kept going. About halfway around, 5k from anywhere, the middle of that loop is sort of like in the middle of nowhere. And um, my feet were going numb and I noticed they were going kind of purple and uh, and uh, and a lot of pain there too and I just said to Kevin I can't run anymore this is not a good idea he looked at my feet and said you're in trouble they were red raw underneath and, the, and not only that but they were kind of going dark as well and we thought gee this is not looking great it looks, looks like it might be frostbite and he said you try and battle on Sean and I'll, uh, I'll go and get an ambulance so that's what happened and uh, and uh, as it was in the end, I battled on and, and uh, kind of walked back. And by the time I got back there, we beat any ambulance by the time there was, we didn't have mobile phones back then. And uh, I, I, I was driven by Kevin to the hospital and spent quite a lot of time in Vancouver hospital. And uh, they were talking about chopping off toes, chopping off feet, that sort of thing. There was a bit of skin grafting that happened in the end. And luckily they saved my feet and saved everything. And I've got every little limb still on my body, uh, so there's no war stories with, you know, short of a big toe or short of a foot or anything like that, luckily. That's awesome. So, Sean, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, can you just let us know the website and when you're, uh, you're going to be up and running down in Melbourne? It'll be the same website, okay. www.westcity.com.au. I'm keeping that the same. Cool. Um, but uh, all our apparel will have sweat on it. We'll, we'll, we'll wipe the Sydney off the apparel. Um, yeah. It'll purely be sweat. Same logo, but uh, same website, uh, same email address. That's great. And again, uh, one of the good things that I loved when I was training with you is the fact that it's, um, you have some very, very handy and good runners out there, but it's um, for all age groups as well, isn't it? It's not really designed for elite athletes. It's people that are just starting to learn how to run and kids as well, all the way through to someone who wants to almost be an Olympian. So, 
Absolutely, chicken. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's great. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate it.